Good evening. Welcome. It's nice to see such a good turnout tonight. Welcome to February 10th, 2020 Board of Education meeting. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to ask Mr. Juan Kraft if she would lead us in the invocation. And then Ms. Janet Rose would also like to lead us in invocation. Thank you. The King, <clears throat> I'm reading True Nobility from Puppies for Sale. A king sent word into the village that he was in search of a new court counselor and confidant. The first subject was escorted in, and the king inquired what he had done. The man knelt and rattled off his resume as an architect and mathematician who had designed the castle and the bridge with complicated statistics, plans, and logic. He claimed he would counsel the king on how and what we do, why we do what we do. The second subject was announced, and the king inquired of his qualifications. The man knelt and explained that he was the one who had built the castle and the bridge. He could counsel the king and his people on the necessity of having a firm foundation and strong pillars to support them in everything they do. The third subject was brought into the king and asked what he had done to qualify for the king's court. He knelt and bragged about his legal and medical degrees. He said he could obviously counsel the king on what was broken and how to fix it. Distraught and disgusted with the egos and self-centered attitudes of each of them, the king reluctantly invited in the final subject. When he saw an old white-haired woman enter the room, he lost his patience and sarcastically inquired what she could have possibly done. Quietly, she answered, I was their teacher. In response to this, the king rose, stepped down from his throne, and humbly knelt at her feet to pay tribute to the noblest profession of all. Good. Thank you. Miss Rose? Mine is just a few words of encouragement, really, for our seniors who have been working so hard and waiting for those acceptance letters. And I just want to share a little story with you. Never give up on your dreams. Once there was an older man who was broke, living in a tiny house and owned a beat-up car. He was living off of $99 Social Security checks. At 65 years of age, he decided things had to change. So he thought about what he had to offer. His friends raved about his chicken recipe. He decided this was his best shot at making a change. He left the state of Kentucky, and he traveled to different states trying to sell that recipe. He told restaurant owners that he had a mouth-watering chicken recipe. He offered the recipe to them for free, just asking for a small percentage on the items sold. Sounded like a good deal, right? Unfortunately, not to most of the restaurants. He heard no over a thousand times. Even after all those rejections, he didn't give up. He believed his chicken recipe was special. He got rejected 1,009 times before he heard the first yes. Without that one success, Colonel Hartland Sanders changed the way, with that one, one success, he changed the way Americans eat chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken, popularly known as KFC, was born. Remember, Never give up and always believe in yourself in spite of rejection. And with that being said, I, I really believe in the lessons that are learned from children's literature. So I have a little book, and I'm going to ask Sydney to read this little book, and then she's going to donate it to her mother's classroom library. Yeah, it's very short, Sydney. Okay. I am fabulous, Flamingo. <clears throat> Hit one more time. I am fabulous, Flamingo. There is nothing I can't do. If you stick out of the flock, then you can be fab too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super splendid, sloth. I give a slow pace. I take time to smell the roses. It's a journey. I'm not a race. <laughs> I am champion chameleon. I am such a jazzy sight, so show off your true colors and you'll find that life is bright. Ooh. I am outstanding orangutan. I have fun every day. If you like to go bananas, you can live your life this way. I am a perfect peacock. I was born to be a star. No matter what, remember to be proud of who you are. And that's the end. 
And I know all of our seniors are stars. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Brian Matney to come forward from Currituck County High School. He's the principal there. And he is going to have one of his uh, students lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, Mr. Stefanik, it is my privilege to present to you for our leader in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening, Mr. Ryan Engelhard. Ryan, a resident of Knott's Island, is a senior who is currently completing in standout fashion his academic career at Currituck High. He aspires to a career serving our nation as a military officer and recently, to that end, earned an appointment to the United States Naval Academy. Upon commencement, he will continue his studies in Annapolis this summer. We're very proud of you, Ryan, if I could ask you to come forward at this time. Thank you very much, and congratulations. <clears throat> you okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. All right, our school spotlight tonight, Dr. Brian Matney will be um, helping us with that, and also Principal John Parkman at Curta County Middle. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, Mr. Stefanik, once again, good evening. Please let us thank you for the opportunity tonight to share with you one of the many exciting things happening on the campus of Currituck County High School. This past spring, we applied and were accepted as a College Board Advanced Placement Capstone School. Institutions who have earned this distinction are authorized to confer the prestigious AP Capstone Diploma, which many contend rivals the International Baccalaureate Diploma in terms of both strength and stature. Currituck remains one of only 1,500 high schools in the nation and 1,800 across the globe earning capstone status. Currituck Selection is one of the 1,500 American campuses, places us in a small, august, and coveted 6% of all U.S. high schools. Wow. The program accentuates the development of academic research, communication, and presentation skills, all critical dispositions integral to collegiate and professional success. We've asked the good Brendan Rawls, a member of our mathematics department, who we handpicked to help lead us in this initiative to share with you some of the details and aspects of this endeavor. He began working with our inaugural cohort of students this fall, including our own Taylor McCarthy, who we will also call upon to share her perspective and her experience in the program over the past several months. Again, as part of our ongoing effort to increase opportunities for students and enhance rigor at the castle, let me call on the good Brendan Rawls. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, as previously mentioned, my name is Brennan Rawls, and I'm a math teacher at Currituck County High School. And I have the pleasure to be able to present to you uh, AP Capstone and the program and what we are doing uh, with it. Uh, so is, can I get the, the it's up? Is it, yeah. It's awesome. So to apply some context, I was asked last spring if I would be interested in teaching an AP course. And of course, I'm going to say yes. Uh, <laughs> I've never taught in an AP course, so I happily obliged. Um, and to be honest, it's one of the best experiences I've had teaching thus far, just to preface. So I'm going to be biased. <laughs> so uh, after learning a little bit about this AP course, while I was excited, I didn't realize the prestige and weight that this AP course had. As previously mentioned, we're one of 1,800 schools to be able to offer such a distinction. Uh, it's not something that we can take lightly. and. Uh, Again, I'm so happy to be able to introduce the AP Capstone program to you all. So what does the AP Capstone program consist of? As you can see on the screen, the AP Capstone consists of passing a minimum of six AP courses with a three or higher. Four of those courses can be any AP course the student chooses, but two of them must be within the AP uh, Capstone sequence, the first being AP Seminar and the second being AP Research. Uh, this being our first year means that our students are currently taking AP Seminar with myself, and next year we'll be taking AP Research with a teacher that we, yet, we have yet to determine. The AP Capstone program consists of two tracks. We can see the infographic provided by College Board. The students have two options. They can take just AP Seminar and AP Research and passing both with a three. They get an AP 
research and seminar certificate. If they had complete an additional four courses on top of the AP seminar and AP research sequence, they can get an AP capstone diploma. Uh, these courses on the transcript and the certificate or diploma in hand is most likely the single greatest distinction of true academic talent our county has to offer. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits. The benefits are ones that will take students wherever they go, wherever they want to go. When I applied to college not too long ago, one of the first questions that was asked of me is, is your school a designated AP capstone school? I had to say no. And it wasn't until last spring when I started realizing why that question was so important. Our students can click yes on that question. And the reason that that question was at the top of the application was because these students stand out in the sea of academically gifted children. This designation of AP Capstone is taking a hold of the collegiate landscape, and students are being seen as beacons for the future of our nation and international relationships. Another important attribute is that students are developing skills that they will be taught in college. In AP Seminar, students are taught to analyze problems from various lenses and perspectives to come to an effective solution. They learn to develop argumentative techniques to get their point across while analyzing places of weakness in their rhetoric, as well as addressing counterarguments to their solutions. In AP Research, students learn to produce original research work in a field of their choosing. They become independent thinkers and researchers to analyze problems, formulate hypotheses, and conduct experiments. Another big plus, I'm sure in the student's mind, is the fact that they can earn college credit by taking these courses. I believe AP Seminar would be considered a strange course in the traditional sense. And what I mean by that is that my AP Seminar will look different than another AP Seminar's teachers. Our skills will be the exact same. However, I can pick the themes that I want to talk about and design my course around those. Uh, I had the ability to take research, news articles, paintings, poems, and everything in between to see how various mediums, mediums could be used to present a point of view. Consequently, our students are taking things that are going on in the world and analyzing them through the skills that they're being taught. This means that by extension, our students are no longer bound by the four walls of our room, but rather embrace the world as a classroom through which they can dissect and synthesize information. In my classroom, students analyzed two major themes, the first being education. Students were able to identify such problems as the efficacy and effectiveness of homework, where they tried to write and convince me through the research of their own, maybe to lighten the load. Nice try. <laughs> After spending roughly nine weeks discussing educational controversy, we moved to topics that are more nuanced and required the students to be a little bit more academic in the presentation of the material and that was prison reform. In this unit, we read several perspectives on various topics, such as the ethicality of private prisons, the financial strain of prison reform, cash bail, and so much more. Students had the privilege to read great works such as Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. While the students were given various topics to analyze, the real yardstick in my mind with which we can measure their success is by looking at what the students are choosing to research and write about on their own without the teacher influence. So thus, the real question would be, what are students investigating for themselves? Students decide to write essays, uh, one student decided to write an essay on alternatives for the state and federal government in responding to the opioid epidemic, which the author argued that more attention needs to be given to the social and ethical consideration of opioid dependence and develop solutions and developed solutions by looking at foreign countries like Italy to adopt similar rehabilitation policies. Another student wrote an essay on the detriment of sprawling cities, or that the detriment of sprawling cities have on agricultural land and its effects that it may pose on our food production. The problem here was addressed with the nuance that related to our community, as we see the expansion of Tidewater region slowly coming to our doorstep in Moyoc. The author developed solutions to uh, the author developed solutions to these problems by finding innovative ways to use technologies to maximize crop yield in the finite amount of space available. We had several authors analyze the role of government in the transition between non-renewable to renewable energies. Some argued through their research for a more direct approach for our government, while others argued through their research that the privatization of renewable energies uh, could help ease the transition. 
The list of topics are endless that our students are talking about, and they're at the forefront of conversations that we hear on the national and international lexicon, conversations that are grounded in research and are, need, are in need of a synthesis from all perspectives. On top of this, we've had several students that are sending some of their works to magazines and newspapers like the New York Times for potential publication. This past fall, I asked the seminar students to take an anonymous poll that allowed them to give feedback on the class. These were two of the comments that were left of many, and much of them saying similar things. Our students, by engaging in this program, are doing something that no graduates from our entire school system have ever done before, and it has been an honor to teach this course in these kids. Lastly, this course would not be where it is without the support and guidance of Dr. Matney. He has been truly remarkable when it comes to helping our students and supporting this program. I consistently get asked about the work that we are doing in the classroom, and I hear his enthusiasm when he speaks about the important lessons that are being learned. I would like to thank the board for allowing me to speak tonight, and most importantly, my wife, for uh, <laughs> her constant support as a new teacher in a new class. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. John Parkman, Currituck County Middle School Principal. Good evening, members of the board and Mr. Stefanik. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about a program that we have, and I have several of our students here that are going to speak for us, so I'm going to keep my comments very brief tonight. But our school mission at Currituck County Middle School is to create an environment that is safe, engaging, and prepares students for success and lifelong learning. To that end, we have instituted a special program in our school, and here are some of our wonderful students to tell you more. And we're going to start out with Mr. Andrew Miles. Andrew? Hi, my name is Andrew Miles, and I am, I am in eighth grade at Currituck County Middle School. Academic subjects like reading, math, science, and social studies are important, but these are not the only things that we kids need to learn to become successful in the real world. Hi, my name is Haiti Terrazona. Three years ago, when I was in sixth grade, a character education program was started at our school. Students meet in a small group setting almost every month with the same staff member over the three years they attend school at CCMS. In our groups, we explore character traits like respect, perseverance, and honesty. Lessons include reading, writing, discussions, video role-playing, and games. Hi, my name is Kylan Brinkley, and I'm also in eighth grade. Three years ago, my sixth grade group started with an eighth grade teacher, Dr. Marcia Salt. We have met with her in character ed for three years now, and I feel I have a strong bond with her. Even though I have never had her as a classroom teacher, she has become a very trusted adult for me, and every month I look forward to seeing her in character ed. Hi, my name is Aiden Harris, and I'm in the sixth grade. This year, in the month of November, our character ed groups focused on citizenship. Our school made over 200 Veterans Day cards for our country's service. Men and women, which we sent to a local VA hospital to pass out to veterans. Hi, my name is Izzy Phillips, and I'm also in the sixth grade. Last month, we focused on cooperation and kindness. We work together in pairs to create heart-shaped sun catchers, a pretty ornament that can be hung in a window. Our school made over 300 sun catchers. Most of them are delivered to a local nursing home, and over 60 of them are being distributed to the elderly in our community through the Meals on Wheels program all this week. 
Next month, we are having intramural games during character ed. The goal is to create more positive school climate where students interact properly with their teachers and fellow classmates, turning our classrooms into better learning environments. Won't you come join us next for our character education? Thank you very much. Thank you for everything you're doing. And I'd like to call Assistant Superintendent Renee Dowdy and Dr. Matt Lutz, Assistant Superintendent, to the podium. Good evening, Chairman Etheridge, members of the board, and Superintendent Stefanik. It's our pleasure to come before you this evening to recognize some of the many outstanding educators here in Currituck County. Tonight, we're specifically highlighting those teachers who qualified for the teacher legislative performance bonuses for the following areas, fourth and fifth grade reading, fourth through eighth grade math, advanced placement, and industry certifications and credentials through our CTE program. Dr. Lutz will recognize the elementary teachers who earned the aforementioned performance bonuses. <clears throat> Good evening. For a teacher in grades three through eight to be eligible to earn a performance bonus, they must have taught reading or math the previous school year, rank in the top 25% of the state, and or LEA based on EVOS scores in reading and or math. They also must still be teaching in Currituck County Schools. As a side note, the state of North Carolina had to revisit eligibility criteria for third grade reading. Therefore, there is a delay in recognizing our third grade teachers. We'll do that at the next board meeting. Eligible uh, teachers will be uh, recognized in March. Now, please join me in recognizing the following educators for their outstanding performance in grades four, five reading, and or math. Ms. Kim Balance. Noyak Elementary School, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state. When I call your name, if you would come on up. <laughs> Jeannie Philbrook, Noyak Elementary, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state, and top 25% LEA. Leanne Heflin, Jarvisburg Elementary School, fourth grade reading, top 25% in the state and top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> Stephanie Sanderlin, Shawboro Elementary School, fourth grade reading, top 25% in state. Katrina Costello, Mayock Elementary School, fourth grade math, top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> Caitlin Short, Mayock Elementary School, fourth grade math, top 25% in the state, and top 25% in Currituck. <laughs> we are the LEA for all those non edge speak people in the audience. So. All right, so Laura Hughes, Mayock Elementary School, fifth grade reading, top 25% in the state, and top 25% in Currituck. <laughs> Nicole Johnson, Jarvisburg Elementary School, fifth grade reading, top 25% in the state, and top 25% in Currituck. <laughs> Lauren Fentress, from Knott's Island, she's not been able to with us tonight, but she was top 25% in the LEA in fifth grade math. <laughs> and Sherry Kite, Central Elementary School, fifth grade math, top 25% in Currituck. <laughs> Ms. Dowdy? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Go Moyak. Go Moyak is right. Congratulations. Here's our girl. Moyak is showing up. Congratulations. Thank you. Moyak is showing up. I'm proud of y'all. Thank you. Hey. Congratulations. See, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and the celebrations continue. Please join me in recognizing the following educators for their outstanding performance in grades 6th through 8th grade math. Ms. Kristen Joyner, Curry Tech County Middle School, 6th grade math, top 25% in the LEA. Ms. Patricia Coffey, CCMS, 6th grade math, top 25% in the state and top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> Mrs. Jennifer Powell, Mayotte Middle School, 7th grade math, top 25% in the state and top 25% in the LEA. Karen Gazinski, Moyot Middle School, 7th grade math, top 25% in the state and top 25% in the LEA. <laughs> and Ms. Lisa Stutler, Curry Tech County Middle School, 8th grade math, top 25% in the LEA. Don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> I messed up last time. Let's shake hands. Congratulations. We probably failed to mention the most important part. They all received monetary bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> Teachers who teach advanced placement courses developed by the College Board are also eligible to receive bonuses if they taught an AP course the previous year and remain teaching in the same school district for the current year. AP teachers are awarded based off of bonuses for students who score at least a level three or above on their AP exam. Please join me in recognizing the following teachers earning a performance bonus for advanced placement course courses. Mr. Thomas Andrakovic, AP Biology at CCHS. <laughs> Ms. Deb Butler, teaching AP Calculus at Curry Tuck County High School. Kim Mulwinney, teaching AP Chemistry at Curry Tuck County High School. <laughs> Mr. Zach Dearman, teaching AP Language at Curry Tuck County High School. <laughs> this is Valerie Person, teaching AP Literature at Curry Tuck County High School. <laughs> Sickness is going around the high school as well, so many of them couldn't be here tonight because of illness, unfortunately. Mr. Robert Griffin, AP Statistics at Curry Tech County High School. <laughs> Ms. Anita Rabino, AP Studio Art 2D and 3D at Curry Tech County High School. <laughs> and Ms. Joanna Bloom for AP Government at Curry Tech County High School. Finally, career and technical education teachers who taught a course the previous year in which students can earn an industry certification 
or credential and are still employed in Curry Tech County Schools are also eligible for performance bonuses. CTE teachers are awarded bonuses for industry certifications and credentials that their students attain. Please join me in recognizing the following career and technical education teachers. Ms. Michelle Dowdy, CCHS Health Science Teacher for Nursing Fundamentals. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Rhodes, CCHS Carpentry Teacher for NCCER National Center for Construction, Education, and Research Credentials. Susan Sawyer, CCHS Business Teacher for Microsoft Word and PowerPoint Certification. <laughs> and Ms. Julie West, J.P. Knapp Early College Business Teacher for Microsoft Word and PowerPoint Certification. One final time, let's give all of our educators a big round of applause. We're proud of all of you who qualified. Congratulations to all of our teachers. Great job. Keep up the good work. Superintendent Stefanik will go over some school growth and principal recognition. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge, uh, members of the board. I would typically uh, uh, make this presentation from my seat, uh, but I couldn't figure out a way to read the names off the certificates and get the certificates to the uh, you know people coming up, so I'll do the presentation from here. <laughs> Uh, each year, uh, the state superintendent of uh, public instruction recognizes schools who either met their uh, school growth target or they exceeded um, that school target. Uh, I am pleased to announce that uh, I will be introducing nine uh, out of our ten principals this evening for uh, receiving those honors uh, from the state uh, department of public instruction. Principals, if you're in the audience when I call your name, uh, please come up. Central Elementary School receives a certificate for meeting expected growth. You can call her name. Okay. Carrie Chapel is her name. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. WT Griggs Elementary School receives a certificate for achieving expected growth. Jarvisburg Elementary School receives a certificate for achieving academic growth. <laughs> Knott's Island Elementary School receives a certificate for achieving academic growth. Moyak Elementary School receives a certificate for meeting expected academic growth. <laughs> Currituck County Middle School receives a certificate for achieving academic growth. Tech County High School receives a certificate for achieving academic growth. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Mayak Middle School receives a certificate for exceeding their academic growth target. J.P. Knapp Early College High School receives a certificate for exceeding academic growth and receives a certificate for achieving outstanding graduation rate of 98.6%. Thank you very much. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Much like the much like the teacher uh, bonus program, where um, uh, teachers get recognized for uh, achieving at a, a high level um, uh, when compared to their peers across the state. Uh, we were lucky to have three principals recognized, uh, and they received uh, uh, bonuses as well. Uh, Deb Gorza, um, when she spent uh, time as principal at uh, Knott's Island. Come on, Deb. Come on. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Again, principals receive recognition uh, on the bonus program for the uh, academic achievements of their schools. Um, for Central Elementary School, uh, Ms. Chappell was recognized as one of the high achieving principals in the state. <laughs> and what I believe receiving the highest um, level of uh, um, recognition, uh, Ms. Fallon at J.P. Knapp was uh, um, receiving a, a bonus uh, as one of the highest, highest achieving uh, schools in the state of North Carolina. Congratulations, Ms. Fallon. <laughs> now, I, saw, I know some of you beat the handshakes. You kind of beat the, you know, the instruction, but uh, you're going to take a picture, and then you can do handshakes again. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations to all our principals and all of our schools for the outstanding achievement. Again, congratulations. Public comment session. The public comment session is a time when an individual or a group can address the board about our schools. This is not a time to speak about issues or concerns involving identifiable personnel or students. Matters of this nature should be submitted in writing to the superintendent and your concerns will be addressed. Individuals or groups will be called in order in which they signed up and will be asked to limit their remarks to three minutes. Please state your name and your address. The first um, person that signed up is Jason Sarnowski. Jason? I'm Jason Sarnowski, 164 St. Andrews Road. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to Kirtuck County about a pool. And I'm sure you've seen the Facebook forums and they've been blowing up. Uh, my son uh, has been swimming for two years. Uh, he got invited by a band member because he's a, he's a bandy. Um, and he thoroughly enjoys band, but he thoroughly enjoys swimming also. Um, and he made regionals last year, but he chose not to go because he made all district band also. So, I mean, that's, that's the caliber of student he is. He's probably into one of the tops of his class and they really need a pool. Uh, Miss Buzzer does a great job with them, but they just don't have adequate facilities. Um, a football field is 100 yards long, 120 if you include the end, end zones, right? Could you imagine if that football field was 67 yards long and 36 yards wide instead of the 53 yards wide that it should be? Baseball field is 90 foot base paths, 127 feet from, from uh, home plate to second base, 400 feet to center field. Could you imagine if it was only 60 feet between the base paths? 85 feet from home plate to second base or 275 feet to, to center field? Wouldn't be a very exciting game in high school. Basketball, this one get, gets funny, it's 84 feet long, 50 feet wide, 10 feet goals. If it was 50, 56 feet long, 33 feet wide, and six foot eight goals, do you think it would be a very fun game? These kids are swimming in a 17 meter pool, a 17 yard pool. It's 50 feet long. It's 25 feet shorter than it should be. They're going to come up 25 feet short every time because they don't have the proper facilities to train in. So the swim program is busting at the seams. 
if anyone's ever seen the Facebook post, this isn't even the full swim team. All right? Three lanes, double wide, 27 people touching each other's feet. They can't even get up to full speed. They get one day a week that they have to share with other schools at Elizabeth City Y, and that one is not even regulation either. Okay? It's supposed to be 25 yards. It's 25 meters. The only thing they really get out of the 25-meter pool is the ability to jump off the blocks. All right, I'm going to read a post from uh, um, from Miss Buzzard. I'll probably go over a second too. Long story: When I took over the swim team 11 years ago, I was driving the bus to Elizabeth City four days a week for practice. We practiced at the Coast Guard base two days a week and at the YMCA two days a week. We shared the lanes with J.A. Holmes because both teams were fairly small. They said, you only have to do that for two years. And, and we would have a pool in Currituck. Two years later, the bathtub was built at the YMCA. I was told the high school team could not practice there because it wasn't a swimming pool, but a therapy pool. The Coast Guard then built a new facility that does not allow civilian usage. So we actually went a year without a pool. Um, I can't even get through it. Sorry, guys. Um, next year, I drove to Crawl Light for two days a week. Those were some long nights. Eventually, when I agreed to take this YMCA swim team, I began to practice my high schoolers there as well. But enough is enough. And there's another one more post. I posted this on my personal page. I wanted to share this as our team practices in a 17-meter, three-lane, 90-degree pool. The regulation pool, I think, is 62 degrees. Could you imagine the shock for the swimmers? 26 high school swimmers, eight to nine people per lane. We've had seven practices in a real pool the entire season. Also, our only opportunity to practice starts. Those practices, we have four lanes for one hour and then drop to two lanes for 30 minutes. For every swim for us is a win. 60% of my team will make it to regionals this year. That is a win. Great team, great season. Currituck needs a pool. I'm not asking the school board to build it. Please tell the board of commissioners that we need a community pool that we can make as a resource for our swimmers and use as revenue. Because we need to stop sending our money up to, up to Virginia and we need to stop sending two count, send our kids two counties over to go swimming every day during swim season. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Laurie Sarnowski. Laurie Sarnowski, 164 St. Andrews Road. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of the Hankey family. While I really wanted to attend tonight, I've been under the weather and still recovering. Swim team has not only been wonderful exercise for my son, but has truly touched his heart. It wasn't until he joined swim team that he found his thing, the passion for something that drives a person. He has loved every minute with his coach and teammates. He has made it to regionals the past two years. Our kids making it to regionals are swimming against schools that swim daily in Olympic-sized pools. A 17-meter pool doesn't allow for correct conditioning. When our kids swim in competition in a 25-meter pool, they are actually slowing down after the 17-meter mark. As only three lanes are available, approximately eight to nine people must swim in each lane, which means it's difficult to improve individual times as the fastest person can only truly go as fast as the slowest person in their lane. The pool is a therapy pool, which means it stays 88 to 89 degrees. It's hot and it makes it difficult to breathe. Imagine how competitive Currituck County could be with a coach like Coach Buzzard and a full-size pool for our kids to practice to their fullest extent. We need to invest in our county's future. A pool isn't just great for the high school swim team. It's necessary for kids in an area surrounded by water to learn to swim. It's perfect for rehab and for our aging population. Thank you. Bethany and Gabriel Hankey. Okay, Ms. Dana Parker. Dana Parker, 106 Hammock View Court. I am here tonight for two reasons. 
first to apologize for not being a stronger advocate for public education. Many of us talk privately about what we want for our children, but have failed to speak publicly. For that, I am truly sorry. By remaining silent, we have portrayed a false narrative to this board and to the county commissioners that we are pleased with what we have. Secondly, I am here to encourage and support each of you and encourage you to be unapologetic champions for children. Please lead us in our fight. The events that led to tonight started with a simple Facebook post <coughs> about broken scoreboards. From that post, soccer parents complained about a lack of restrooms, swim parents about a proper swimming pool, and track athletes about a broken track where middle school or high school cannot host a track meet this entire season. From that post, some of our county commissioners responded that the county commissioners had no authority to spend money and that it was the responsibility of you, the Board of Education, to request these funds. Tonight, I am pleading with each and every one of you to ask for every single item that our schools need. Ask for everything and force the commissioners to justify their cuts. Allow them to justify the cuts and the voters in this county can decide if that's what we want. By being financially cautious, you have helped perpetuate a belief that what we have is enough. And as a parent, I am here to say it is not. Our children deserve the best we can give them, and as a 22-year resident of Currituck County, I know that we can do better. I am asking, not for a swimming pool, but that the Board of Education take a bold, long-term approach to our educational needs. Let's look at what the future really needs. Please consider supporting one new centralized high school rather than a new elementary school. I am well aware that a high school is twice as expensive. I am also aware that our current high school would be a perfect placement for a unified middle school with room to grow. One combined middle school would allow our, us to pool our resources, helping to fill our current staff shortages, and we can even provide Spanish and chorus for our children year long. This plan would allow us to create K-2 and 3-5 schools across the county. For example, Moyak Elementary could be K-2. The current Moyak Middle could be 3-5, thus creating the added seats we need in the northern end. This structure of primary and intermediate schools would continue across the county and allow us to have K-8 seats opening for continued growth. This plan would allow us to focus on a state-of-the-art high school with appropriate science labs, band and chorus classrooms, an auditorium for theater productions, and athletic facilities. According to the county commissioners, you should also be requesting a swimming pool for that beautiful new facility. The fact is that Currituck is changing. It is not the Currituck that many of you grew up in or the one I moved to 22 years ago. By rezoning our current elementary schools, we can absorb the growth in the northern end and give ourselves time to construct a new high school. Our commissioners have spoken, and they have placed the responsibility on you to request the funding. Please allow the parents here tonight to join with you. Allow us to advocate for our children. And please accept my apology for remaining silent for far too long. Ms. Dawn O'Dell, O'Donnell, I'm sorry. Dawn O'Donnell, 117 Shore Drive, Jarvisburg, North Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me, first grade. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, going to apologize. My words are not as lovely as theirs. And I just want to pull. Uh, I mean, I think a high school is great, too, but I, I am here to advocate for a swimming pool for our kids. Um, this is my daughter's first year swimming on the varsity swim team. But she swam as a Currituck Y Barracuda for many years. And when I saw the pool for the first time, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. That's so tiny. And they're tiny people, and it was too small then. Um, there are giant kids swimming in that little pool, and they're doing great things. We went to regionals, and 60%, right? 60% of our kids qualified for regionals. 
kids that were just learning to swim practically coming into high school. Um, I don't know how to fix that, but I do know that that's what we need, no matter what happens. All of our kids across the county, not just our high school kids, but our middle school kids and our little people, we're surrounded by water on all sides, and we don't even have proper a proper pool for them to swim in. Um, I don't know if you've been in the Y pool. Has anybody been in the Y pool? Y'all, it's real hot, okay? It's hot, and it's small. <laughs> And imagine putting over 26 children, high school children, in that pool to practice. It's not okay. They have great flip turns. Yes, great flip turns um, because they have to turn so often. But for everything else, think what they could do if they had a full-size pool and proper facilities and more than one day a week to practice starts because they can't dive in that little tiny bathtub at the Y. Um, whatever you can do would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Sarnowski. Andrew Sarnowski, 164 St. Andrews Road. Hi, my name is Andrew Sarnowski. I'm a swimmer from Kurtzuck County High School. I've been swimming since last season, and I went to NCHSAA Eastern Regionals this year. Throughout the season, we had a three practices a week in the Kurtzuck YMCA pool and one in the Elizabeth City pool per week. Now, why does this matter? This is important because our swim team is 26 to 27 members strong and growing, and the size of the Kurtzuck pool is significantly limiting us. Imagine this, eight to nine people per lane in a 17-yard pool that's what everyday swim practice looks like. We are limited by the size of the pool and space to practice. The lanes are undersized and the pool is 90 degrees because it's considered a therapy pool. When I went to regionals, it really hit me that our practice facilities put us at a severe disadvantage. We were swimming against schools, schools, um, sorry, um, with proper sized pools and USA teams in their area. They were able to train in the same pool they would compete in and reach their full potential as high school athletes. I think that if we were to have an aquatic facility with the regulation size pool, we would be able to reach our full potential and go further to develop our edge as student athletes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Sybil O'Neill. Hello, my name is Sybil O'Neill and I'm from Maple, North Carolina. Bad behavior disrupts education. Your mission should be to raise educational standards and in order to raise ed educational standards, children must attend school. And they cannot behave badly while they're in school. The Guardian says, first, education is about values as well as knowledge skills. Values such as respect, courtesy, and consideration are the foundations of civilized society. That includes respect for others and respect for authority. We need strong leadership. We have good teachers, and a lot of teachers have left the school system because of their, the students bullying them and acting in a manner that they should not be acting in. And there's no, there's no discipline for these children. In order to keep good teachers, we need to do whatever possible to make sure students behave. There are more fights at the Curry Tech County Middle School. I've watched them on videos, and I'm sure that you have too, and not one teacher got up to do anything. There was no authoritative figures around. Principals need to walk the halls, watch and listen to the students. There has to be discipline in the schools or we may lose more teachers. I would imagine the schools will not only lose teachers, but will lose students to homeschooling. To the tune of over $5,000 per child per year, the system receives from the government and from the county to educate these children. It would be nice if we had administration with backbone to enforce discipline to its fullest. And I ask each one of you to have a talk with your administration and see if they can't get some backbone and discipline these teach these these students. Thank you, Ms. O'Neill. Glenn Hines. I didn't 
prepare any speech before I come up here, but uh, I actually my concern was um, your previous meetings and some of the decisions that were made a while back concerning, or I guess our new proposed Moyak Elementary School. And it seems like a lot of times, and the county has given y'all this task to, to have our school and to actually pick the site. But some of, I'm gonna pick on Charborough School, and I love <coughs> Charborough School, but when they picked that site, do you know that the soil scientists actually turned that site down for housing? They turned it down because of soil. And we're not using the science that we have because we picked that site. That was a very poor decision on somebody's part. I don't, I don't think y'all were here, but that costs everybody a lot of money because you picked that poor site. When we picked the Jarvisburg site, that was an A number one site. As far as uh, Karen, because she does, she's been in wastewater. Uh, <laughs> And that's some of the stuff I did. Uh, that site, the wastewater was like 250. The Jarvisburg was 950. The operations cost for that Charborough site is actually more than all the schools combined just to run that wastewater. So I think there's been some movement to go to that survey road site, which is we're, back, we're being back down to a poor site, and it's actually going to be a cut and fill site. And don't let politics get in the way of picking this site. Do the math, the construction cost, and the operation cost, but don't let the politics. And, the, and it seems like the commissioners, that if y'all pick wrong, they're going to blame it on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not here, but. Uh, Actually, some of them are. But, uh, you know, everybody wants money for this part and that part. And, but take time to look at it and don't get caught up in all these establishments and want to go here and there. Just look at the site and look at the, the science and the construction cost. That's, that's kind of all I have. Thank you, Mr. Thank Hines. You. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Craddock would like to respond. First of all, uh, thank you, Mr. Hines, uh, well noted. Um, I really appreciate you pointing those things out for discussion. Ms. O'Neill, um, I believe a lot of uh, some of uh, what you're talking about, um, I'm very concerned about too. And uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna work real hard on that. And as far as the uh, pool, I'll be honest with you, I'm not on all those Facebook uh, threads, so I really didn't know much about the pool okay nobody called me nobody emailed me phone didn't ring out working where i where i live we swim in the bay uh <laughs> but uh i still am concerned about your uh request so uh maybe follow up with me with a phone call and explain it on another time or email i don't always find myself on everybody's facebook post but thank you thank you and mr stefanik Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Um, I'd just like to follow up uh, um, uh, on what uh, Mr. Craddock was saying uh, about Facebook. Um, we, we do monitor Facebook uh, at the central office, but uh, on an official side of things, uh, folks that post things on Facebook that does not qualify as either an informal or a formal concern raised to the school district. Um, and, and first and foremost, the reason it doesn't, we can't reply uh, on Facebook. When we're dealing with confidential matters like uh, the schools, whether it's personnel or students, we can't, we can't share any of that information on Facebook. Um, I encourage you to either email me, uh, email um, one of our um, assistant superintendents. Uh, uh, Dr. Lutz is in charge of uh, K through five, actually pre-K to five, uh, and uh, uh, Ms. Dowdy's in charge of um, six through 12. Uh, we're all uh, very open door policy people, uh, and we want to hear uh, what you think uh, about the, the schools that your uh, children are attending. Um, 
I don't have in my pocket right now several million dollars for a pool, so uh, I can't directly help you with uh, some of those requests that came up uh, this evening. But as far as concerns about school, whether it's academic or discipline, um, there seem to be um, several threads out there. Uh, we cannot respond in the Facebook um, arena. Uh, if you really want to have a meeting uh, with me or uh, any of our administrators or teachers, please reach out through Facebook, or excuse me, I just said it. Don't reach out there on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I have Facebook on the brain here. I got, um, so uh, d do not use Facebook to reach out directly to us. Use um, email, um, and if, you're, if your concern uh, is, is, is more, or you're more comfortable in the anonymous arena, the school district does have an anonymous uh, reporting site on our website. Um, you can click on that. It makes it a little difficult to get back in touch with people uh, if they put something out there anonymously. But if you give us a, an item to look into, uh, we will research it and we will look into it. Uh, so uh, again, reach out to us directly uh, and we can uh, address uh, more of the concerns better than we can address them by trying to follow um, all the um, uh, tangents, I guess you what is the word of uh, um, of the Facebook uh, conversations because it may start with one conversation as uh, Miss Parker said uh, started out asking for uh, uh, business partnerships for scoreboards uh, and turned into soccer needs swimming needs um, baseball needs softball needs um, so if you have all those needs we need to channel um, each individual need to the correct place so we can start addressing uh, some of the needs that were expressed this evening Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rose? I'd just like to thank all of you for coming out this evening and sharing your thoughts and concerns with us. I have been in favor of a pool since that little bathtub was built. I questioned it then. Why in the world did we do that? And, and I did see the thread on Facebook, and I did see the commissioner say that uh, you need to ask your Board of Education and just get them to ask us. So, um Believe me, we ask the commissioners for lots of things, um, and I can't see why this board wouldn't be in favor of asking them for a pool and, and scoreboards and all that good stuff. Um, we, we put many things on the capital outlay request. We do not get them all. But thank you again for coming out. Yes, we've been talking about a pool since my kids were in elementary school. Uh, two of my grandchildren take swimming lessons, and they're on the swim team um, under Miss Buzzard, and she does an excellent job with our students. And I'm very happy that they're you know, learning to swim because we are surrounded by water for Currituck County. But it's been an ongoing discussion for 30 years or more, At and least. and I can remember when the Y was built, and you know we pushed for a. a a pool at that time that would meet the standards for competition and I myself I have to go you know to Elizabeth City um, to watch my grandchildren compete and I, w I would be in favor of a pool I would love it but again we have a wish list there's some, several things that I would love to have uh, but we're unfortunately we have a fiscal responsibility that we have to meet I'd be glad to ask for all of these things but um, Sometimes we, we don't get the things that we would like to have, but I would be an advocate for a pool. Um, Mr. Stefanik wanted to say a few more words. Just a, a reminder from Ms. Rose, I, I was negligent. Um, thank you to those who spoke this evening. Um, th this is one of the um, options you have for communicating with the, the Board of Education and the, and the superintendent. So um, thank you for coming out, and, uh, and I know it's uh, scary. Uh, so thank you for having the courage to stand up and share your thoughts. Yeah, we all appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much. All right, do you have a motion that we approve the agenda? So moved. Uh, uh, I'd like to remove um, one item okay. um, and have it separated out, and that would be uh, item um, 12B. Okay. All right. We'll we'll uh, exclude item 12B from the agenda, and that will be a separate item. So I move that we accept it with the. Uh, amended. amended. Yes, ma'am, and I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any discussion? Okay, motion carries. Okay, and 
the separate item that is the landscape and island lawn care and landscaping, mm -hmm. Donald Fairby landscaping and Odom's lawn care and tractor service. So we, that we've ex excluded, we need to. Well, we're, 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 yeah, but we're, we're set it, we set it on its own item. Right. Okay. But yeah, we have to do student up. board member reports. Okay. Yeah, it can just show up after the accreditation discussion. The, okay. Yeah. All right. Student board member reports. Sydney McDonald. I have a quick question before we start. Yeah. If there is another public comment here, are they allowed to come up? Um. Well, sure. We can let them. Normally, they sign up for public comment. But we can we can certainly listen to their concerns. Do you want to? It's not a concern. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Maybe. Okay. You want me to introduce you? <laughs> this is Dr. Emily Worthy, and I am currently an intern at her um, veterinary clinic in uh, Grandy. Wonderful. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Sydney said, I'm Dr. Emily Worthy from Eastern Shore Animal Hospital. I apologize for the signing up mix up. <laughs> okay. But um, I was approached about nine months ago by Ms. Linda O'Neill to accept an intern from the Currituck County CETE internship program. Um, you know, initially I had not had a long term intern in the hospital before, and I did have some concerns. We are a medical facility and working with animals, there is a bit of unpredictability involved. There's certainly liability on our end as human beings and an intern coming in and not wanting that individual to get injured, scratch, bitten, or anything of that nature. And then certainly liability for our patients. We don't want medical errors or anybody to be harmed or injured. They come to us for wellness. So. Miss O'Neill gave Sydney an absolutely raving recommendation, and with nothing other than that in mind as far as expectations, we welcomed her in, and she has been absolutely fantastic. Veterinary medicine is not always easy. It is not always puppies and kittens and cuddling. There are, there's blood, there's feces, there's challenging emotions and challenging outcomes. And through all of that, Sydney has been nothing but positive and professional. She's incredibly intelligent and driven and an inspiration to watch as a young woman coming in and into this profession. I've had um, a fantastic time talking to her about what she's learning in school and also in Future Farmers of America and Sustainable Farming, which is not my area of expertise, but I really enjoy listening to her go into all of the details that she has learned. You know, comparing to other interns we've had in the clinic for short periods of time, just a few hours or a few days, you know, she is leaps and bounds above where they are in, in what she's able to come in and do. And that has just been absolutely fantastic. Um, even compared to some of our entry level employees that have been put through background checks and interviews, she has come in with a strong skill set and a you know, higher drive to work than even some of those individuals. So I would just like to say I would absolutely support other local businesses being able to take interns from this program. It has been a wonderful learning experience for me and I hope also for Sydney as well. <laughs> uh, and you know, I see it as a wonderful chance to give back to the community and help serve this wonderful county that we are in. And I also think that you know, it's a great chance to give our students an opportunity to see what, what are the chances for them, opportunities for them locally in our community that once they finish their high school and college educations, they really can come back to Currituck County and have very successful professional careers. And I'd just like to say after being here at this meeting tonight as well, it's an honor to be a part of our wonderful education system here in Currituck County. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Sydney? Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no problem. Oh. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to start our... Um, student School Board reports now with Mayock Elementary. From celebrating meeting school-wide student behavior goals to kicking off kindergarten swim lessons, 2020 has started off strong at MES. Coming up with this month is the celebration of the 100th day of school, tomorrow, and our annual Booster-a-thon Glow Run, which takes place Friday, February 28th. Other than those main events, our Panthers have focused on targeted learning goals during the month of January and February. I'll now do Jarvisburg Elementary. Jarvisburg Elementary welcomed its newest Jaguar to the family on January 8th. 
Mrs. Ryan had a healthy baby boy in its home and enjoying maternity leave. Miss Nicholas Derby, Miss Beth Williams, and Miss Leanne Heflin trained the of Wellis Bullying Prevention Program in January, and this past workday trained all of the JES staff. This happening to take place during Counselor Appreciation Week, where we celebrated Miss Derby for all she does for our students. Our second nine weeks awards program and PBI stays were a huge success. Coach Martin helped us to plan and exceed great PBIS days along with the PBIS team. We love seeing all of our students shine each quarter so much that we started to place yard signs to honor our students of the month in our front yard. If you haven't seen the pictures online, check out our Facebook page. We prepare to celebrate the 100th day of school on Tuesday, February 11th. Also, kindergarten swim lessons are set to begin this week. Lastly, educators from Jeanette's Peer Outreach Program We'll be on campus Tuesday, February 18th, to work with all grades, level K through 5. We'll participate in the Beach Show and Tell. Oh, the Beach Show and Tell. Second and fifth grade will also participate in Squid Dissection. Students will be able to learn about the organisms, touch the bio facts, and have a fun day at the beach. Thank you, Ms. Taylor, for applying for this grant program. I will now finish off with Central Elementary School. February has started busy with our annual Love Bug Luncheon that was held on Friday. Thanks to all the families that came out to celebrate a little love during our lunchtime. We are also kicking off our Black History Month celebrating to include a special assembly for our students tomorrow presented by the Bright Star Theater Group entitled African Folk Tales. Students have also had spotlights of different African Americans who had a significant impact on American history presented during the announcements, and second grade has been doing research projects to also be presented during the announcements to support Black History Month later this month. Central is also gearing up to love our animals this month, in which we show off our family pets as well as collect donations from the Curry Tuck Animal Shelter and do change drives in order to support Southern Hope Animal Rescue and Education located in Sharborough. We love our pets. This month, CES received the status as an ununified champion school, which is great through the state Special Olympics program. Congratulations to Miss Greschalk at CES. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I will now pass it on to Taylor. My first school for tonight will be Sharborough Elementary. Sharborough Elementary has been a busy place over the past month. We held our first semester awards program where we recognize students for academic achievement, growth, and positive behavior. We are currently in the middle of our Boosterthon fundraiser, and so far it is successful. We are raising funds for this year towards building an outside classroom for our students. Our fun run will be this Friday, February 14th at 1, per weather permitting. Thank you to everyone who has donated so far. Our next student of the month luncheon is February 21st, which is a Friday, during each grade level's assigned lunchtime. As we head into March, we will celebrate Dr. Seuss with a week full of spirit days and our family Seuss night. Seuss night will be Thursday, March 12th from 5.30 to 7 at Shaw Row. Come out and join us. Next, we have Griggs Elementary. Griggs students have been busy and back at it after our winter break. We are fortunate to have two assemblies in January. The NED show presented on January 10th, and we had a special African-themed assembly on January 24th. Both were greatly enjoyed by our students. PTO held their first event this year on January 31st with a great turnout at Family Bingo Night. Our teachers enjoyed a day of planning as part of our Growth Mindset PD feedback. We also enjoyed our first session of OWES training. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but... Griggs is doing a food drive to celebrate 100 days this week, 100 cans for 100 days. Our third nine weeks award ceremony will be held on February 13th. And next, I will go to Mallory. All right, so my first school is Knott's Island Elementary. We have been busy doing great things on the island. Over the holiday break, we made changes to our nurses' clinic and our health classrooms in an effort to better serve our six students with a more private, quiet, and restful environment, the nurses' clinic is now located towards the main office off of the media center. Our health classroom is now located in a more convenient location off of the gym. This was done in direct response to the need of our students. Our students are actively engaged in community service and have been busy collecting non-perishable foods for our local food bank. Academically, our students continue to work hard, both individually and collaboratively, here on the island. Our third and fifth grade, our third and fifth grades researched prepared lesson stations and presented information to the rest of our students about life during colonial times. It was such a powerful day for both the presenters and their fellow students who was, 
who were learning from them. This provided an opportunity for students to build leadership skills and gain a sense of pride by teaching their fellow students. Writing has been stressed and students are eager to share their work with each other and our staff. There have been some impromptu sharing of writing taking place as students can't wait to share with our staff. Reading is huge and since we returned to school in January, we have had seven students earn 50 AR points. They have chosen to use those points for an AR lunch date with Mr. Goins. And then it says, we know, crazy, right? <laughs> this lunch comes complete with a special lunch location, personalized nameplates for attendees, and a surprise dessert for each student provided by Mr. Goins. This has become a highlight for Mr. Goins as he has had the opportunity to learn more about the students and they get to spend some time relaxing and laughing during the lighthearted time that they are together. Knott's Island has also had multiple opportunities to brag about our students and staff. Our fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Fentress, was designated as one of the top math teachers in the district. Our own staff nominated Rockstar Award was presented to our fantastic bus driver slash custodian, Miss Liz, as she was recognized by Mrs. Garner for her caring and thoughtful relationships with both the students and her colleagues. In addition, we have one first grade student, Aaliyah C., who has already, who has already reached 100 AR points. She was recognized on the morning announcements for this awesome feat. We feel that having the right mindset to start the day is so important, so we have started a 30-second dance party each morning during our announcements. <laughs> this has proven to get everyone in a great mood to begin our day. We just had our PBIS celebration for the second nine weeks last Friday. The students really look forward to earning the opportunity to attend this fun afternoon event. And finally, we have started a trivia competition on, the, on a mathematician of the week. Each Monday, a broad hint is given about the weekly mathematician. Throughout the week, there are more hints given so the students can research to try to figure out who the mystery mathematician could possibly be. The students write their answers down and turn them in, and a school winner is chosen from all correct guesses. We are learning so much about 21st, 21st century mathematicians and have fun doing it. Plus, there's an awesome prize for the person who wins each week. Life sure is busy but fun over here on Fantasy Island. <laughs> Hashtag small school big learning. Hashtag island knots. <laughs> and now for Currituck County Middle. We are quickly moving into the new year here at Currituck County Middle School. We celebrated our second quarter PBIS event with a movie and popcorn as a reward for our outstanding student behavior. Students enjoyed popcorn donated to the school from the Outer Banks Popcorn Shop. The Beta Club recently selected 14 new students for induction based on their academic honors. Our character education program is continuing Continuing with much success, this, month, this month's theme was cooperation and kindness. Students made Valentine Suncatcher decorations that were sent to a local Sentara nursing home. In January, our school mastered over 18,000 words in vocabulary.com and is only 10,000 words mastered away from second place in the entire country for our division. Finally, students celebrated a spirit day on Friday the 31st of January where students wore jerseys from their favorite sports team. And from Moyoc Middle School, Moyoc Middle School started the new year with some barking good times. We welcomed new staff members, custodian Darlene Bayless and eighth grade English teacher Susan Lamb. Our band had stu wow. two students qualify for all district band, Sophia Osher and Grace Walls. We inducted 34 new National Junior Beta Club members. We danced the night away at the No D Dance, which means no discipline, with over 300 students attending. Our ELA check-ins showed growth for the majority of our students. Our boys made it into the seed rounds for basketball. Our wrestlers are dominating on the mats. We hosted national anti-vape speaker Luca Kinnard. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Our Bulldog Bucks PBIS store opens tomorrow, February 11th, at lunch. For Counselor's Week, we pampered Mrs. Jateau with gifts and an LJ Beaner's lunch. For Love the Bus Week, we are gifting and showering our bus drivers with love. Mrs. Gorza and Ms. Jateau attended a human trafficking in-service in Elizabeth City on the February 5th workday. And then it just reviews the social media, which the Instagram is official underscore Moyoc Middle NC and Moyoc Bulldogs for sports. The Twitter is Moyoc Middle School at Moyoc S. And for Facebook, there is a link, which you can probably just search Moyoc Middle School. <laughs> and that is all that I have. Now for Olivia. I will start with J.P. Knapp Early College. Congratulations to CTE business education teacher Julie West on passing the PRAC 
the proxy for high school business content. Just completed National School Counseling Week. Recognized Miss Boone last week throughout the week. Miss Boone has been busy all month meeting individually with 10th graders on their four to five year plans. ACT Blitz started today for 11th graders to prep for ACT on February 25th. All grade seminars are also working on ACT awareness activities. JPK 9th graders started their first COA course ACA 122 in January, facilitated with seminar teachers. JPK recruitment is underway for all 8th graders in Kirtuk County. Here's a quick run- rundown on those recruitment events. Student presentations completed at both middle schools. Parent information night presentations completed at both middle schools. Hosted a day at JPK on the K-8 through teacher workday February 5th. 50 students attended, over 100 including families. Mass mailing to all 8th graders. Social media blitz campaign posting on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. New materials designed, ordered, and created, and 83 applications already received window closes March 17th. What's next with recruitment? Open house March 5th to focus on content highlights and JPK extracurriculars. JPK college trips on the horizon with 10th graders visiting ODU on March 12th and 11th graders visiting NC Wesleyan and National College Fair in Raleigh on March 19th. It's Love the Bus Week here at JPK. We love our drivers. The last school is Kirtuk County High. February is off to a fabulous start here at the castle. Each week of this new semester, we have continued our Talk It Up Tuesday events where two members of our facility and staff are asked to intentionally talk with at least two students about the college process from opportunities and scholarships to the college vernacular. Our Word of the Day segment through Ed Welliver's Student Morning News also continues as part of our ongoing efforts to focus on and enhance literacy. In its inaugural attempt, our 2018-2019 literacy magazine, Desk Graffiti, under the direction of Katie Page, garnered a blue, ris- blue ribbon from the North Carolina Association of Teachers of English, recognizing excellence in arts and literary magazines. Our first team to enter the East Carolina University Institute of Coastal Studies Blue Heron Bowl competition in Wan, Wan- Cheese. <laughs> One <laughs> cheese brought home a bronze medal training only a Raleigh charter school and the North Carolina School of Science and Math. Our student team was led under the guiding hand of Liz Brinker, who was named by her colleagues as new coach of the year. We also sent our first team from CCHS to the annual Ethics Bowl in Chapel Hill under the direction of Zach Dearman. Kudos to senior Abby Rose who was recognized as one of only six of the North Carolina Distinguished Finalists in the NASSP Prudential Spirit of Community Awards competition. Among these six honorees, only three of the state's counties were represented, Wake, Union, and Currituck. Our own teacher and athletic trainer, Courtney Phelps, recently earned an appointment to the North Carolina Athletic Trainers Association 2020 Leadership Fellows Program. Led by Val Pearson, Kurta County High School recently hosted the region's first collaborative AP English professional learning community on Saturday, February 1st. We are very proud as well of all the students who earned distinction at the NCBA Eastern District Band Clinic at ECU under the direction of Madeline Espy. This included two first chairs in baritone and trombone and a second chair in alto saxophone. On January 15th, as a shot in the arm during the midst of exams, our facility and staff were treated to lunch, including homemade chicken and egg salad sandwiches by the administrative team and the American Legion Ladies Auxiliary Unit 288 of Coinjock. One of our teacher assistants, Kim Kunkler, is a proud member of the auxiliary and helped spearhead these efforts. This past week, we were honored to treat our counselors' lunch from Bell Cross Bakery as part of National School Counseling Week. We look forward to honoring our bus drivers with breakfast as part of this month's Love the Bus campaign. Regular season basketball action continues Wednesday, and we are proud to honor the student-athletes from track and wrestling to swimming 
who have and are continuing to represent the Knights in both NCHSAA regional and state competition. This past Saturday, our defending state champion cheerleading squad took home first place in the 2A Northeastern Coastal Conference regional meet proudly hosted at CCHS. Our senior night will be celebrated prior to our varsity girls basketball game versus Pasco Tank tomorrow evening, and our annual winter awards ceremony is tentatively slated for Monday, March 16th. Thank you very much. All right, field trip request. Mark Stefanik. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Um, just highlighting for the board um, the um, diversity uh, of trips uh, and activities that our students are involved in, uh, everything from uh, sports uh, at the highest level, at the district, uh, regional, and state level, to uh, um, statewide and national uh, competitions, uh, national welding competition, and statewide leadership for FBLA. Um, you know, our students are not only working hard in the classroom, uh, but they have these uh, uh, extra activities they're involved in, and they excel at those as well. Do I have a motion that we um, approve the field trip request? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Would you like to discuss those? No, I was just going to say I, I thought in a previous year that uh, uh, we, uh, it, it was just an information no, item. Yeah, yeah. It's just an information. <laughs> okay. yeah. But approval is fine. We appreciate your approval. Uh, they can go on their field trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, accreditation discussion. Do you want to go over accreditation discussion? Um, sure. Mr. Crotic, would you like to, to discuss that? Yeah, I'll okay. discuss it. <clears throat> So um, I really thank um, Kurtuck County and uh, would be uh, very uh, fortunate if we went ahead and moved forward to get the high school accredited um, for numerous reasons. I think the student body, at any time we have 25% uh, of our uh, district students enrolled in Kurtuck County High School. Um, and then, of course, as they move on with their transcript, it would be... Um, very nice that it would be recognized as it is accredited. We'd also all, I believe, citizens of the county would be beneficial. It would be very beneficial from the economic development standpoint. And so I'm going to let uh, Mr. Stepanek, uh talk about what he would like to talk about. But then I'd also like to hear from the principal, Dr. Matney, his thoughts. And I'd also like to hear from the economic development uh, Director uh, Larry um, Lombardi. So, okay. Can Thank I you, give Mr. a brief history of yes, why we haven't pursued, you know, accreditation in the past? Uh, and this started in the early '90s. I think that's when it first came up, and we looked to see what happened after that. We had students accepted to Harvard, full scholarships in the engineering program at Duke full scholarships to UVA, Wake Forest, and just last year we had a student receive the highest academic scholarship that's given in the state of North Carolina, and that's Marley Walls who got the Moorhead Scholarship. Not once did we hear from any of those organizations, do you have accreditation? Uh, but on the other hand, I don't know what parents look at, and for economic development, if, you know, being accredited would be a bonus of what people look at when they look to move to uh, Curry Tuck, you know, I could support that. Uh, since 2005, we have, and, you know, Mr. White knows this because I made the presentation to the commissioner, we've cut $1.7 million worth of positions. But accreditation is going to cost in excess of 30000 So, like I said, I would tentatively support it as long as we don't have to take it out of any of our funds. Uh, and, you know, we've been one of the top school districts in the state, especially in the early 2000s, and I see Miss Jarvis, who was one of the highest performing, what, ELP teachers back then, economic, legal, and political systems, plus we had the highest uh, student achievement in the whole state in geometry, and that was even surpassing Chapel Hill the mythical giant of North Carolina. But anyway, I could say that 
you know if economic development is going to benefit because in the long run will you know receive benefits from that i could support you know it's uh you know going for accreditation okay all right um we have been monitoring um, accreditation possibilities uh, for about the last uh, two or three years. Uh, and uh, uh, the state of North Carolina started an accreditation program in 2012. Um, and, and, and much to my surprise, um, not too many districts in the state of North Carolina have, uh, have utilized uh, um, that system. Uh, but we did, and uh, we um, received accreditation for um, J.P. Knapp uh, Early College uh, last year, right? Miss Fallon, or year before, year before. Uh, so they've been accredited for for two years. In that particular system, there's basically a, a menu um, or a set of criteria that schools have to meet uh, to uh, be eligible for. Um, an accreditation recommendation from the superintendent. We've been monitoring uh, Currituck High School, and uh, again, as as they uh, improve in an area uh, that gets them one step closer to the accreditation uh, menu, um, they seem to uh, fall a tenth of a, a percent or two tenths of a percent short in another area, and so their number of um, items that they meet in the criteria has stayed about the same. Um, there has been a, a request uh, to look at other um, accreditation possibilities, and there is uh, one uh, most of the people uh, might uh, recognize it as being uh, an accreditation through the Southern Association, uh, but now they have a partner uh, group that they uh, work with. Copria? Co say it again? Cognia. Cognia. God, that was close. Uh, yeah. uh, so uh, Cognia is the name of the uh, uh, the the group now that takes care of K through 12 uh, accreditations. Uh, and the, the one piece to that, and, and Dr. Dobney alluded to it, um, instead of a $7,000 total cost, you're talking about $30,000 annually uh, until you uh, actually uh, meet the accreditation standard. Uh, and so uh, uh, when I talked to Dr. Matney over the weekend, uh, he said he has some experience with that company, um, although it was under another name uh, when he worked with them. Uh, it's the same basic company on the on the website. And so I'll um, you know uh, give the mic to uh, Dr. Matney and let him explain uh, what the Cognia um, Association offers for schools. Uh, yes, sir. Um uh, the CEO of what is now Cognia, Mark Elgart, did a masterful job about uh, five years ago in um, consolidating a host of regional accrediting bodies, including the Southern Association. Uh, that was reformed in its new coalesced um, uh, state as Advanced Ed. Advanced Ed is now um, um, in 240 countries um, and has taken on that new name um, um, and offers a accreditation process that is not based simply on looking at some uh, pretty dogmatic measures, um, metrics of student success. Uh, it is a model that is rigorous. Uh, it is a model that forces a school division and individual schools to look um, uh, very, very deeply into its strengths as well as its weaknesses. Um, they have state-of-the-art survey instruments, uh, professional development and training. Um, usually it takes about a year um, for a school to do its own self-study. Um, the uh, independent group will come in a visiting team over three days where they work about 16 hours a day uh, and they will confirm uh, for a school um, if you know Brendan Rawls said before he's a bit biased um, they will tell you if you have bias if you've identified strengths correctly based on the data uh, based on their observations of teachers and students and uh, conversations with key constituents um, parent groups uh, and the like um, they will tell you if you are on target for identifying uh, effectively your areas in need of improvement. Um, um, I, I guess when I came here, um, and again, uh, my experience with the accrediting agency uh, in another state has been nothing but positive uh, and worth every penny of investment. Um, a little different in my former capacity, uh, a little north in Virginia, um, but I believe only about six schools in the entire state of North Carolina have availed themselves of the accreditation process that DPI put together in 2012. Uh, so as you, as you can imagine, when I came on board and read that, I, I thought that had to be a mistake. Um, um, I think there are uh, some 600 high schools public in the state of North Carolina, and maybe 1% have pursued that. And I think part of that is because it is so dogmatic. Um, and it treats every school the same, whether you're East Chapel Hill High School or whether you're in the most metropolitan inner city type environment with high levels of free and reduced lunch participation uh, and, and the like. 
I did a little research, um, and you all could probably teach me lessons on this. Uh, two of every three high schools public in the state of North Carolina, if I've read my data correctly, have pursued and secured um, accreditation through uh, what is now Cognia Advanced Ed. Um, all three of the high schools in Chapel Hill, all 14 in Durham, 90% of those in Charlotte, Mecklenburg. Um, and, and again, from my perspective, um, and I know you all agree, I just want to make sure that each of our graduates have every advantage that every child may have in some of the larger school divisions. Um, uh, the tail is in the tape as far as numbers. Uh, again, uh, two-thirds are, are in the process or have, have, in fact, secured accreditation. I think it's just something very powerful about having a disinterested third-party objective group come in and tell us, as you seek to improve, uh, as you focus on growth, uh, you are on the right path. Uh, and we're here to help guide you through that. Um, I can't help but think, again, I'll speak uh, anecdotally to my previous work in Virginia. Uh, I don't think there was a business person um, from in Virginia Beach all the way to Richmond um, that, that were speaking to blue ribbon panels on which I served that would not argue that a, uh, a high school diploma that is uh, gaining credibility or secured credibility through an accrediting agency like SACS or Advanced Data or Cognia um, is certainly a, a, a selling point as people want to locate there as their own children are educated uh, as well as when employers look for uh, folks to uh, enter the workforce. So again, I, I think again, Cognia speaks for itself, 36 members worldwide. Um, again, my experience has been nothing but positive. Um, and again, um, certainly uh, full disclosure, nothing but an apologist for their good work. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Matney. Yeah. Can we hear from uh, the uh, economic director? Mr. Yes, Lombardi? Please. please. Mr. Lombardi. Good evening. Good to see everybody. I'm Larry Lombardi, the director of economic development for Kirtuck County. Um, good doctor kind of took some of my talking points, <laughs> so I'm not going to belabor the point. But I will say from an economic development perspective, um, I'm not uh, the first guy, the site selectors who are representing these companies, whether it's product services, software, manufacturing, they're going to be doing their homework and they're going to be going to different areas. And education is definitely one of those things that they look for because they're looking for an educated workforce. They're also going to look at the curriculum as far as at the high school, what the, the school system's doing, certainly from the community college. And to have that accreditation, because remember, we're in a very competitive global marketplace. And we're competing with 99 other counties in the state of North Carolina. And because of where we're located, we're dealing with the Hampton Roads area, very competitive. So for us, from my perspective, it's another tool in the toolbox. And all I see is upside to that. And it's something that we can promote quite a bit, even though the site selectors may not contact me directly up front. But for us getting that information out there and showing that we are trying to improve we are moving towards an educated workforce, not that we aren't, but even uh, a higher level with the certification. And also for these companies that would want to live because we have growth coming on into this county, and the first thing you want to look with families is what's the school system? Where can my child, how is that going to benefit my child? So with accreditation, that would be an absolute plus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if I might. So um, basically, the way I see it is not counting the 300 plus or minus students at JP now. If we took the 30,000 plus or minus dollars and we did a mathematical formula on the remaining students, we're talking about $7.69 a student. And I think um, it's a twofer. It's a win win for the education system and the student, and it's a win win for Currituck County. Um, I also have a letter from uh, the Board of uh, Commissioners to the Board of Education. And if you wouldn't mind, I'll read it. Uh, thank you. Okay. It says, Dear Board of Education members, the Currituck Commissioners recognize that one of the most critical resources in our county is our education system. There is a tangible link between Currituck County School System and the economic prosperity of our community. 
Companies searching for locations to locate their businesses consider several criteria to pick a site. The local education system is a significant component of that process. One run criterion important to this process is accreditation of Currituck County High School. It is the understanding of the Board of Commissioners that the Currituck County High School is not currently accredited. The lack of accreditation affects economic development as well as the student's ability to move on to some higher education organizations. It has been communicated to the Board of Commissioners that the Board of Education is interested in pursuing accreditation of Currituck County High School. The Board of Commissioners requests that the Board of Education move forward with this process with the understanding that you have the Commissioner's full support in this endeavor. Sincerely, Mike H. Payment, Vice Chairman. And with that, I'd make a motion that we um, pursue um, accreditation through, um, I'm sorry, I have a hard time pronouncing the organization that Dr. Matney um, mentioned was the new name, but I would uh, make a motion that we um, start right now in 2020. We go ahead and get this done. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Can we discuss it a little bit? No, you Just have to, a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting, to, wait a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a first, we have a second. All in favor? Now you do the discussion. discussion. Any discussion? Yes, I'd okay. like to discuss. Okay. <laughs> this is something we have been talking about for at, for at least two and a half, three years, I know since I've been on the board. And I don't think any of us up here want to do anything. We don't want to bypass anything that's going to benefit our children. Right. So I, I think this is a great thing. But Ms. Fallon, could you tell us how this has benefited your JP Knapp students? How, how does it benefit them with college and, you know, is you, do you see that as a real, I mean. I, I can't necessarily link it to that. Okay. I think the biggest benefit for our students is graduating with that associate degree. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. No further discussion. Um, yeah, how are we going to work on it? Huh? How are we going to work on it? What are we going to do, Mr. Stefanik? Well, once if uh, if it's approved by the board, uh, then we make contact with the, the Cognia company, and uh, we talk about you know what the what the rates are and and what the process is, and then they um, will come out and meet with us, and we'll meet with the high school uh, uh, administration and, and set up the process. We talked about this, you and I did within the last week, and you said we weren't quite there. So we're close. Well, yeah, we uh, uh, over the past how many years did we look at Miss Dowdy? Five years. Yeah, when the when the state system started, um, they've got either five or six criteria, and whatever it is, we we kind of hang um, on average in the three to four uh, criteria range. And then, as I said, it might not be the same three or four each right. year. You know, So we find one that we're going to work on, and that one goes up, and then we slip just a little bit in one that we had the year before, and then it goes back. And so we've never reached the five, and we definitely haven't reached the six, because then we would have applied for the state uh, uh, process. Through Cognia, in talking with uh, uh, Dr. Matney, uh, it's, it's a much broader process, and it's not just a set um, um, set of criteria that they actually work with the school, and it's about how you're working to, um, you know, constantly improve, um, you know, your your educational uh, um, processes, educational system in your in your building, and that you get you get positive uh, uh, credit for that. Um, so if you may not reach, um, you know, the the level that they want in graduation rate, then you might, uh, in, in the school improvement process, get some uh, get a positive nod that way, and then you work towards the accreditation on, um, what would I say, on process, um, get you some, um, some positive consideration through Cognia rather than just the menu of uh, uh, achievement options that are on a, a state report card uh, and, and the state. So it's not a checklist. Right, right. The state aligns theirs 
primarily with the areas that are on the, the building report card. Uh, and the Cognia system is, is broader than that. Okay. Well, I think it I think it'd be a, a wonderful um, to have the accreditation for the high school. And if we have the county commissioner's blessing, let's move forward and see what we need to do. So we have a first, we have a, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. We'll make the contact. Okay, thank you. Uh, with our consent agenda, we did pull item 12B out. Good night. Thank, thank you, you very much. We pulled it out from the um, agenda, and do we need to discuss that or just, just an information? It's okay. just it's just uh, uh, what it is. Vote. Yeah, we went Sorry. through. Okay. Right, we went through the bid process. Uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, companies that, uh, uh, through bids and or uh, uh, interviews, uh, we've uh, uh, concluded that these are the three uh, companies that will take care of our, our school sites throughout the county. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve item 12B? Oh, I'll make a motion to approve 12B. Sure. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I'll make some discussion. Um, I'm going to uh, abstain from this particular vote because I had um, about approximately two years ago had um, helped one of these individuals out where I received uh, some money with one of my pieces of equipment from my farm. So I'm going to abstain from that vote. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. We do. Okay. Uh, motion carries. Okay. Our work session for the month of March is March 5th at the Knapp Professional Learning Center at 4 p.m. Excuse me. Ms. The, the, the full consent agenda okay. now. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Do I have a motion that we approve the consent agenda? So, so moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? One, one, just one item. Um, you'll see the um, the the modular um, technologies piece come back. Um, what you're doing with the vote today is uh, you're just uh, uh, validating the company that uh -huh. was selected through the bid process for the mobile classrooms. Uh, then we will make contact with the county uh, and discuss uh, uh, financial terms uh, with the county manager and the, and the county commissioners, and then we'll set up a timetable and a finalized contract with the company. Okay. So this is their bid. They 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 were the uh, the selected company through the bid process. So you're saying, okay, this particular company is our company for the the mobile units at Moyak Elementary School. When the finalized contract is done, it'll come back a second time. Okay. Hopefully right. next month. Okay, Ms. Rose? I just have a question about the personnel section. I noticed some coaches on there, and the question has been raised about how do we hire our coaches. So I know typically we advertise all positions. Do we advertise the coach positions as well? Yes. And we, um, long ago, we used to try and get teachers to be our coaches. but Would love that. But it looks like it's not the case as much. That we have uh, uh, a high percentage of, uh, uh, of folks who are not um, on the teaching staff uh, and some, uh, uh, you, you know, we, we, we ask the teachers, uh, you know, who are skilled in those particular areas to come forward, but it's totally their option if they want to uh, put their name in the hat or not. Uh, when we don't have um, on-site uh, uh, staff to be the coaches, then we have to look to the community uh, to fill those coaching slots. I know when you get teachers, you get people who are trained to work with children, not just the skill of the sport. Sure. So, okay. Well, and, and another piece to that is, is they get to see the students all throughout the day. Yeah. And so they get to uh, um, be able to create a, a, a relationship. stronger relationship with yeah. them. Yeah. That's a bonus as well. Madam Chairman, point order. You know, if something's going to be discussed, you know, from the consent agenda, it needs to be pulled out okay. rather than. Okay. So noted. Any other uh, discussions that you would like to pull out of the consent agenda? No. Okay. All right. Um, Board of Education comments. Let's start with Dr. Dobney. Excuse, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
call the vote on the consent agenda? Well, we di we we did, um, and no, we were we were discussing uh, things, and then you go ahead and call the vote. Yeah, yeah, then you're good. Aye, aye, aye. All opposed. Okay. okay. Thank you. I just Any needed discussion? that on the record. Okay. Right. Any right discussion? There. Okay. Motion carries. The consent agenda. All right. I'm not seeing board um, member comments. I'm not seeing board member comments. We're skipping that. No, we're okay. we're going to get ready and do that. We're going to put that right in there, even though it's not on here. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Right. Dobney. Yes. Uh, recently, Renee Dowdy, assistant superintendent, and myself met with uh, Bobby Hannig. And we discussed this one-size-fits-all diploma, and we asked him to do whatever he could to try to get a vocational track or CTE track back into the, you know, curriculum from the state. And he said he would try, and we're going to make contact back with him to see what's, you know, happened on that. I wish Dr. Werther would have stayed because I would have, you know, thanked her for the nice things that she said about uh, Sydney and was also going to ask her, does Dr. Cronegue and his wife still work there? No. They moved. Oh, they did? Yeah. <clears throat> I live in Grandy and don't even know that. <laughs> right around the corner. Right? Really? All right, Ms. Kraft? <laughs> yes. Um, I went to um, all of our schools this month. Um, I um, went to Currituck County Middle School and sat in on Ms. Fallon and Ms. Bowyer's um, um, presentation to some of the eighth grade students to encourage them to go to um, J.P. Knapp, and I was most impressed. Thank you so much for um, all that you do to make it interesting and uh, encourage students. One of the things that they said was, even if you're not sure if you want to go, apply anyway, because at least come and have that opportunity to check. Uh, that same night, I went to um, J.P. Knapp's art show and they did a great job. I attended Shelburne Elementary School's Awards Assembly, not Silent Awards Assembly, and uh, I'm keeping um, tabs on Ms. Garner's art students. They're making a four by eight foot flag out of um, tissue paper. It's very interesting, and so they're about halfway done. Um, I attended Jar Griggs Elementary School's weekly Mallard meeting, and I would like to thank all the students who are all gone now, but maybe they'll <laughs> listen on TV, um, for, the, uh, for them coming and representing their schools. In addition, a big congratulations to all of our, all of our teachers who received bonuses tonight. I'm proud to be representing Curry Tuck County. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Ms. Rose? Well, I would like to do hats off to all of the, the teachers and the students who've earned awards over the last month, whether it be sports or academic or whatever, very proud of all of them. I had the opportunity to attend a basketball game and an anti-bullying committee, and I was able to read with my buddy, and I was able to go on a field trip with the chaperone, as a chaperone with the hunter safety team. Um, and again, I just want to thank everybody that reaches out to us to share their positive comments and concerns so that we can work to make our school system even better than it is. Thank you. Mr. Craddock? Um, let's see. I, I did also attend a couple schools. I see I attended uh, Nas Island's um, um, award ceremony. I visited with uh, Currituck County Middle School. I had a visit at uh, Currituck County High School. I went to the commissioner's retreat on Friday and tried to uh, get them to uh, be interested in accreditation for the high school. I, um, I appreciate all the uh, fine teachers and staff, and I know everybody's working hard. Um, and um, anyhow, um, I'm, I'm very humbled to be here and trying to help you and learning a whole lot. You know, each meeting, uh, new information comes out. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. But as long as you channel that information in a direction that you can use it in a positive way. Anyhow, I wish everybody a happy, um, what is it? It's getting ready to be Valentine's Day. <laughs> and yes, uh, it is. <laughs> I know it's going to be something. And uh, But anyhow, and I want to say uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank the commissioners. 
for supporting this. And I want to um, thank this board for supporting it. And I also want to say God bless Currituck County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stefanik. Three things. <laughs> Uh -oh. very, very shortly. Um, one, an informational item for the board and, and the community. Um, we, we did have a chance uh, this evening to recognize quite a few teachers uh, and, uh, and some administrators. But throughout this county, that, that was just a, a state process, uh, you know, off of uh, achievement levels. Uh, but throughout this county, we have got some uh, very skilled people, uh, and they're skilled in different areas. Some of them will show up uh, in, in state-type contests, if you will, uh, amongst educators. Uh, others won't. Uh, and, uh, you know, one thing that's out there that I see is, like, the ability to connect with children uh, and, and build a positive relationship. And uh, you can go all throughout the county uh, in every building, and you're going to find, uh, you know, talented people uh, working with our children. And so um, hats off to all of them. Um, another thing, um, Back there, uh, holding up the uh, blind, uh, uh, Mr. Monroe, uh, we had the uh, uh, second uh, uh, business owner uh, come forward and compliment the internship program uh, that was started. Uh, and so uh, thank you to uh, um, Mr. Monroe and congratulations uh, for taking that, uh, um, that grant that we received from the commissioners and, and moving this thing forward in a positive direction. Thank you for that. Um, and I had a third thing. Uh, oh, 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 for, for the community. For the community, um, it was off of Mr. Hines' uh, comments. Um, this Board of Education and, and this administrative team um, is doing their homework on the new school site. Uh, you know, we are, um, you know, checking out um, um, land uh, studies, and we are, um, you know, uh, doggedly moving towards the legal contract process and moving through that uh, to make sure that uh, we get the best possible site to use uh, for our, our newest school in Curita County School District. Thank you. Thank you. And a few informational items. Work session is March 5th, NAP Professional Learning Center at 4 o'clock. And our Board of Education meeting is the same day here at 6.30. Um, congratulations to all of our teachers that received recognition tonight. We are very proud of you and proud of all of our teachers and within our county. I would also like to thank all of the, the parents and citizens tonight that came out. It, it takes a lot to... to Take the time to leave your homes during dinner hour, come out and voice your concerns. And I just wanted to let you know that we will be discussing your concerns. I was able to visit three of our schools. I visited the high school, Currituck County High School, the middle school, and also Central Elementary that's very dear to my heart. Um, also, I want to dispel a, a, a myth that there's division between the Board of Education and the Board of Commissioners. Granted, sometimes we don't see eye to eye, but I think that's probably a good thing. You want both boards to come together, but not always come together and, and just agree on everything. You want people to speak out and say, well, you know, I don't quite understand that. Can you explain it to me? Or why are we doing this? Why can't we have the money that we want? But I think we're finally working together um, for the good of the community, and that hasn't happened in a long time. But I'm very happy to have that open communication with especially a couple of the board members that I can pick up the phone if I have a concern, and you know, we'll talk through it. And um, so I just wanted to let you all know that we are working together for the community. And with that being said, do I have a motion that we that we adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. She wants to do it.